Hey, how you doing guys and welcome to another video. So today we actually have some pretty big news coming out of the recent Avatar Legends tabletop RPG game and its sourcebook. The sourcebook contains tons and tons of new information about the Avatar universe, including some shocking revelations about the Fire Nation royal family and Sozin's sister, who stunningly becomes an air nomad. So let's break down the story so far of Princess Zaysan. In the new Avatar Legends sourcebook, which covers the game of the same name, there is a section covering the era of Avatar Roku, and in it we actually get a whole lot more information about Sozin's sister Zaysan and her history. Zaysan was born without the ability to firebend, which as you can imagine for the royal family, is very, very unfortunate. She spent her entire childhood pitted against her brother Sozin by their father, vying to prove her worthiness. The two siblings pretty much fought every day for as long as they could both remember, putting a rift between both of them. In order to survive in that harsh environment, Zaysan looked elsewhere for love and came across the Air Nomads through a nun named Ryoshan. Ryoshan took Zaysan under her wing and taught her many new skills, very interestingly including chi blocking. During their training, Zaysan fell in love with her teacher, but because the young princess had ambitions of toppling the Fire Nation royal family, this pairing just wasn't to be. After the coronation of Sozin as Fire Lord, she instead turned to a man named Kandro, who was a very popular Air Nomad philosopher. Kandro was also a member of a group named the Guiding Wind, which was a collection of renegade Air Nomads who believed that the Air Nation had become complacent. They thought that the leadership of the Air Nomads was seeking far too much cooperation with the corrupt and wealthy citizens of the other nations, rather than finding peace within themselves. The Air Elders, of course, denounced this group as nothing but a disruptive rebel cell, but Zaysan fell in love with their ideals because of her own rebellious tendencies back home. Zaysan turned to this group partially because she wanted to see the rotten and corrupt Fire Nation royal family fall, along with her brother Sozin. She also fell in love with Kandra mostly for political reasons rather than true love. Some would say she's just as politically skilled as her brother Sozin. Eventually, Princess Zaysan publicly announced that she was renouncing her royal titles and giving up her vast wealth in order to live a spiritual life among the Air Nomads. This was such a popular move among the Fire Nation that many other young Fire Nation nobles promised to do the same. You can probably guess that this caused a deep rage within Fire Lord Sozin, viewing it as a blight on his rule. As part of the Guiding Wind Rebel Group, Zaysan finally felt the ability to destabilize and fight back against her brother's rule. She had pretty much never felt the ability to do this before. Knowing that Sozin tended to get sloppy and careless when he was angry, Zaysan believed that she could trick him into revealing his plans to her, whatever they were. Which of course, we know was to use the incoming comet to wipe out the Air Nomads. Although she didn't yet know it, Sozin's plans were far greater and far more horrific than even she could imagine. She knew her brother was cruel and harsh and believed that he would do something massive in order to show off his power. That day eventually came when he used the comet to wipe out the Air Nomads. Either way, following this, the princess debated in her head whether she should be attempting to take down her brother and the royal family, considering that backstabbing was not at all in line with their nomad ideals. The former princess ultimately came to the conclusion that she could accept that evil if it ultimately meant taking down the rotting and corrupt royal family. Eventually, Zaysan proposed to Kandro, which sent Sozin into an uncontrollable rage. He saw the Guiding Wind as a threat to his reign and was willing to do what must be done to take down Zaysan and her rebels, including killing her. And that's where her story ends, for now. The source book for the game ends there for her story, but considering her prominence in the royal family and her departure, it's pretty clear that she's going to be given a ton more story. It wouldn't surprise me at all if she ends up being a victim in the Air Nomad slaughter during the comet. It would be a pretty sad but poetic end to her story. So that is everything we know about Princess Zaysan so far. I want to know what you guys think about this story and how it could play into future stories down the line. Thanks so much for watching and remember to subscribe and like if you enjoyed. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.